We are live. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Joanna Daniel. And if this is the first time watching me, I'm a counselor and I work with adult survivors of childhood trauma. I'm here today with Alison, who's also a therapist, and Alison's work with couples a lot. Um, so we're going to talk about a really important subject today. If this is your very first time um, catching me live, I'm also streaming on Facebook today because I want to invite you over to our, my YouTube channel where we are every day at 1 p.m. I am there live. Sometimes Alison is with me. Sometimes another therapist is with me. And different people will be with me um, every day live, every weekday. On the weekends, we have pre-recorded videos that we that is premiered at 1 p.m. as well because we're trying to do things to help you to get through this crisis. I'm just going to check Alison to make sure that I'm live everywhere. I can see that I'm live on Facebook. <clears throat> Please share this video with the people who who you know will benefit. We're talking about a very important subject today. We're talking about how anxiety, yes, we are, we're over there. Today, we're talking about how anxiety and depression can, well, how they manifest themselves in relationships. I was just saying to Alison, we don't ever talk about mental health and relationships. We talk about, you know, mental health, we talk about depression, we talk about anxiety, but we never talk about, well, if somebody's is in a relationship, if somebody's married, how does that play out in the relationship? If I had anxiety, over there. how would that impact my children? Today we're talking about how anxiety and depression can- Is that mine, Alison? How they manifest yeah. themselves in relationships. I was just saying to Alison, we don't- Okay, right. So Sorry, that's me. <laughs> yeah, okay. If I have anxiety, how would that affect my husband and how would that affect my children? How would it affect the home? And we never talk about that because we're in a pandemic, we're in a crisis. We've never lived this before. We have to help each other get through. There are people with anxiety and depression and children are going to be impacted and relationships are going to be impacted. So I know Alison work with couples and I wanted to talk to her about that today. Is this new, Alison? Do you see this in your practice when people, do people come with this? Um, yes, it, th this is happening on a daily basis. This is happening more regularly than we probably think um it's not you know we don't really tend to pay attention to some of these things um a lot of people carry a lot of anxiety which is not really um noticed and yeah. so they go through life um thinking well okay you know we've got this problem we've got that problem but when it's really investigated and the root of the problem is really explored then it conspires that, well, you know, they're anxious about one or two things and that's just been manifested mm -hmm. in different ways. So it's quite common and, and anxiety has a lot to do with, you know, our interpretation of what's happening around us. Um, so it's often said that it's not the, the situation that's a problem, but it's the way in which we are interpreting it. So again, you know, how we think about the situation how we interpret it, what meaning we give to it determines how we respond. And if we're, we're feeling anxious and we're interpreting things out of sync with reality, then chances are we're gonna respond in a way that's not proportionate to what, what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, anxiety has a knock-on effect on a lot of things and sadly, you know, closest to us are the people that we live with. So normally yeah. the first people that would experience the manifestation of our anxiety would be the people in our homes, our partners, mm -hmm. our children, our family members. Yes, that's true. You know, you said it's anxiety sometimes is the interpretation of um, what's happening around us and how we, not, we, we interpret it. So we're living in a pandemic where people are being furloughed, people are losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. I know that I, I think that now the, the trauma that was not dealt with before will rise to the surface now more than ever. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. For example, men are providers and they want to work and provide for their families mm -hmm. and they might lose their jobs now. Do you think is could that have an effect on how they respond how they are their mood and just the general atmosphere in the home yeah i mean obviously the pressure is on now isn't it i mean there's so much um uncertainty there's so much that's unpredictable out there and it's normal for us to feel or for all of us to feel a level of 
of concern, a level of anxiety. That's that's perfectly normal because that's a way of our, our minds and our bodies telling us that perhaps we will need to take some action to um, either protect ourselves in the days and months to come, or we need to do something if we've already lost our, our jobs or you know, yeah. family members are unwell, we need to do something to sort of help ourselves in the situation. So anxiety is normal. It's, it's, it's perfectly normal, especially in times like this for us all to feel anxious. Um, what's important is that we are um, conscious and aware and in tune with our feelings and not just you know try to um, march on and, and brush aside the, the anxious feelings that we have, but actually to be in tune with them and to, um, to try and understand the triggers because some things will trigger the anxiety yes. and understand ourselves, understand what triggers it and, and try and take, be proactive in noticing. Sometimes we will feel it in our body. Um, sometimes we will feel it in our moods, but it's important that we, we pick up the trigger and, and try and be proactive in looking after ourselves and looking after the people around us. Not just picking our own triggers up, but also noticing triggers in other people as well, because not everyone's um, um, able to articulate um, mm. those feelings, but people might be able to demonstrate that they're anxious through the way they respond to us, for example, and yeah. the way they, they sort of interact with us. They might be standoffish, they might be hyperactive you know so it's important that if people are behaving out of character that we pick up those um those mm. cues and, mm. and mm -hmm. try talk to them about it or perhaps help them mm. and help ourselves as well in the process yeah help yourself and get help if if, get help. Because if there was pressure there before this will just make the pressure worse won't it if there was yeah. already if the relationship was already not a safe place if there was already stresses this this could make it wor um, worse. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling Alison about a book I read years ago <laughs> where I felt there was lots of unresolved things where there was a family where the, um, the husband had mental health and the way it was dealt with was, um, you know, there was lots of prayer support and that really, really did impact the family in a, in a, in a, in a massive way. And while we both believe in prayer, we also believe that there might be something else that you need to do because sometimes we're not open to hearing anything else that we need to do, any other action that we need to take. And so one of the actions might be for this family, if you're if you're a family that's struggling, that either you need help, it, wh whichever party it is in the relationship that has the, the problem may need to get support, may need to go see your GP, may need to call a counselor, may need to get some external support. And for and, and for those who obviously believe in prayer, sometimes when we pray, God answers in various ways, like go and yeah. speak to this person, or we will find somebody talking about, you know, getting some help. That's God's way of answering the prayer as well. So um, let's, let's not box God in or whoever, whatever we believe in, whoever we believe in. Let's understand that normally when we believe in a God or when we have, some sort of faith that that that's bigger we're believing in something that's bigger than us so let's not box in that god and mm. give them our sort of attributes and limited attributes let's understand that you know the god that we pray to works in ways that are beyond our own capabilities and that that god could answer prayers in various ways including pointing us to get some professional help yeah, let's be let's be open to to what else he has to say because we know that it you know it 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 really does is impacting and it can be devastating. And my my thing has always been the children in these scenarios, how how they are and how they're impacted, even though they may be too young to say anything, but they're they're experiencing it as well. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. that's and they, they take a lot from the environment, right? They take a lot from how we are responding to it as well. And yes. with the, you know, which is why it's so important that if we're not coping, that we try and get the help we need. Because if we're very anxious about ar around the children, they will learn that anxiety from us as well. 
and they will tend to be very anxious when they come across challenges um, in life as well. So like I said, it's, it's, it's normal to feel anxious, especially in times like this. Um, but, you know, there's a lot we can do in terms of how we think about things and in terms of how we go about doing things to help us cope. Um, yeah. You don't have to be anxious to the point where it gets to it gets in the way of our day-to-day -day living to the point where we can't perhaps even go anywhere anymore. I've met people, spoken to people who have not wanted to go to work, have not wanted to go to the supermarket at all, um, have had some time of work for stress and have, you know, having to go back has been a, a, a total nightmare because mm -hmm. they're thinking, well, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna get the virus? And mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about putting things in context. Yes, there is a virus out there, but there are things we can do. We can wash yeah. our hands, we can avoid touching our face, we can keep two meters apart, we can wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of the things that we can do within our control, if mm -hmm. we do those things, then you know the chances are we're going to be okay. Yeah. Um, and even when you don't go out, um, you know other things can happen to you at home. I always say that life itself is uncertain. The only two things that are certain are, you know, if you work, you're going to pay taxes, and if you leave, you're going to die someday. Those two are Definitely. certain, but everything else is quite uncertain. And you know, we need to. Um, sort of work on dealing with uh, with with coping with uncertainty. Um, that's really really important. Yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge the the parts the other party in the relationship that having to cope with and living with something that they don't understand and they don't they they're not experiencing themselves and maybe the person who is struggling might not be able to articulate it really well either and it might come out in irritability and anxiousness and anger and man it manifests itself in these ways that are that are negative mm -hmm. i just wanted to talk speak to that person a little bit the one who is having to hold it together the mm -hmm. one who is wondering what's going on what's wrong the one who thinks everything is falling apart but don't know that this is something that needs attention and that it's not something that they can fix or not something that they did that was wrong but it's that is causing this behavior how can we speak to them that they know how to look after themselves while they support so it's it's listening to your body um normally when we feel anxious there there are things that are happening within our physiology some people feel tightness in their chest some people feel that you know their hearts beating faster almost like having palpitations um, some people feel will feel a knot in the stomach. I've heard you talk about, you know, the shoulders feel tight. Mm. So mm. listen, listen to your body because sometimes these things will manifest themselves in in the way that you feel physiologically. Um, also, mm. listen to your moods. Um, yes. Anxiety will get make people feel low because it will. To some degree, in cap, in, you know, you you will not be able to be capable of doing the things that you normally used to do. So it will slow you down. So listen to your body, listen to your moods, listen to your thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. Whilst you may not be able to articulate to verbalize things, um, you may be able to to catch yourself thinking certain thoughts, certain mm -hmm. negative thoughts. Normally, when we're when people are feeling anxious, we say that the the, the thinking becomes distorted, yeah. um, and so they either see things black or white. It's either all good or all bad, or you know, there are various distortions. They'll you know forget about all of the positive things that could happen and only think of all of the negatives. Like, mm -hmm. what if I die? What if this happens? What if that happens? So you know, pay attention to the thought processes that are going on. Pay attention to how you're responding to those thoughts, what you're saying to yourself in response and how you're behaving in response because um, all of those things, it starts by noticing the thoughts, noticing how you're truly feeling and noticing the, the, what's happening in your body. If you start to pay attention to that, you might be able, you might not be able to speak it out, but you might be able to write it out in a journal you yes. might be able to paint, you might be able to draw. Um, but you, And even if you're just drawing something that's nature, 
that that could have meaning you could be able to sit back and try and you know understand what that what you're trying to um articulate in that drawing so mm -hmm. you know, don't lose hope there are other ways and share this with with your partner share share this with the people around you and say you know because when you're really feeling anxious you're feeling discouraged your your drawings are going to reflect that your writing is going to reflect that and that's something that you can communicate with the people around you um mm. so find a way to understand yourself first of all because that's going to be helpful in communicating to other people to the people yeah. around you you know thank you Alison. i always say sometimes when when that's happening, when when there's a mental health, especially if it's a diagnosis, if somebody's been diagnosed with anxiety or depression, it's a disorder, mm -hmm. and not just people who are feeling anxious or having low moods, but it's persistent, it's consistent, and you know you've been to your GP, it's been diagnosed. Sometimes it feels like it needs to be a massive, a big thing that needs to happen in order for this to this for you to start to feel better. Mm -hmm. But as Alison lists those things, it's sometimes you know those little steps consistently taken what really does help mm. um alison before i ask this if you have any questions you can put them in the comments if you know somebody who is struggling with mental health in their relationship and it's causing problems you can put those in 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 the comment section and you can also um contact us you know so we can you know give you more resources i want to talk about shame <clears throat> shame is a big thing if there's mental health there is a there's so much stigma around mm. mental health to begin with so when people have i always say that at church i hear people say can you pray for my mother with diabetes i never hear can you pray for my mother with depression ever <laughs> i have never heard a prayer request around <laughs> depression or anxiety or any form of mental health and i know that it's not because it's not present but there's a lot of shame around it because there's so much stigma around it because people are so impatient get over it think positive thoughts focus you know all of those things, some really flippant things that people will say that sends people in hiding. Mm -hmm. How do we speak to the family that's managing this, but there's some shame? How do we help them normalize what's going on for themselves so that they can begin to shed the shame? Well, I think, again, I'll say understanding plays a big role. So I think it starts with really understanding, because I think the reason why there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of stigma is that a lot of people don't really understand mental health. Mm -hmm. And whilst you can see the body and whilst you can see where you've got issues with your body, say maybe you've got a fractured leg or a fractured hand, you can see that, isn't it? But you, with mental health, it's more about the mind, the brain, which we don't see. But yes. it doesn't mean that it's not there. It is there. And yes. the brain is so complex. It's got different, you know, there's different parts of the brain with different functions. And it's really just you know important to understand that any form of mental health means that the the functionality of the brain has been affected somehow some parts of the brain are not working in the way they should and that's not your fault no that's that it could be a combination of factors and so just like we need to attend to our body when it's not feeling well we need to attend to the brain when it's not feeling very well as well. Um, and, and that's the starting point because that understanding, that education can go a long way towards helping people to reprogram their mindset, their way of perceiving mental health issues and respond mm. earlier, not when it gets to a crisis and yeah. you know people are ready to be sectioned because it's been ignored for so long. But as soon as you feel those triggers in your body, as soon as your anxiety is excessive, as soon as you're realizing that you're more and more reluctant to go out because you're anxious that people are going to judge you, or you're mm. anxious that you're, the people in the house are going to judge you, or when you realize that every, every time you think about something, your thinking is distorted, your thinking is generally negative making you feel afraid that something bad's going to happen because that's what anxiety is anxiety is not being able to cope with the uncertainty because we think that something negative is going to happen but that starts from the mind so when we can educate ourselves that the mind is not really functioning as it should then we'll start to unpack actually you know what what our mental health issues are and that education is for everybody in in the 
in in any relationship or in any family or in, in any even the very young children in yeah. household this thing can be broken down so that young young people young children as young as five six can understand that your brain is inside your head and you know it's got different parts and when something young people are the the, the best people to pick up this knowledge very quickly they'll mm -hmm. understand and when mommy's not you know doesn't seem to be feeling very well or when daddy's not doesn't seem to be feeling very well they may ask you is it your brain again is something not, not working properly um so let's not underestimate the power of understanding and the power of of education and that's going to go a long way i love how you i love how you put that i mean and and, and Brené brown teaches this isn't it the anti antidote for shame is empathy Mm -hmm. And and the way you just describe it is be empathetic to yourself, be understanding to yourself, show yourself love and sympathy. Because if you broke your leg, you would have had it seen to, you would have mm -hmm. gone and get the x-ray, get it put in a cast, you would have gone to do the checkup, do physio, you would have done all these things to make sure your leg gets better and mm -hmm. you can walk again. And what Alison is saying is when, when it's mental health, when it's anxiety or depression, your brain, something is wrong. And she's saying, show it as much care as you would do if anything, if you had had a physical, um, if a physical disability or something was wrong with you that impairs your ability physically, um, give it as much care and attention. And in one of the days, I don't remember which day last week, I did the mind body connection and talk about some of the ways that you can look after your body. And she's saying, you know, look after your brain. There are foods that you can use that, that mm -hmm. nourish nourish and, and look after your brain, you know, enough rest and exercise and air and enough mm -hmm. water, all of those together, when you, when something is wrong in, in this way, look, nurture and love on your brain the same way you would the broken leg. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and when you understand it for yourself, that when we, when we have been, when we're able to walk our own journey and we're able to settle into and not be ashamed of what's wrong with us or what happened to us, then what the wider what, what everybody else around us think don't matter as much mm -hmm. because we have been able to we we are settled and at peace with it for ourselves mm -hmm. um, and i guess basically that's what you're saying do that for you so the shame you're not carrying any shame around if you have a disorder if you have been a diagnosis of mm -hmm. anxiety or depression you are not carrying any shame about it because you're at peace with what you what, with, with it and what you need to do to get better absolutely it would be the same thing for the relationship, the next party in the relationship. They won't be carrying shame either because they'll be understanding and empathy. Yeah, because I mean, shame is fundamentally um, when when you say, well, there's something wrong with me as a person. That's what shame is. I, mm -hmm. You know, I am defective. That's what brings shame. But when yeah. you understand that actually, you know, this is normal, given yeah. certain circumstances it takes yeah. that element of shame away yes and and it's not something that you're doing <laughs> you're not doing it and you can't snap out of it sometimes and you know your partner is not doing it either then they're, they're not doing it to annoy you to make yeah. things worse they're not doing it to themselves they didn't cause it upon themselves all of these things that we think because that's what we hear and those mm -hmm. are the things we internalize and mm -hmm. so there can be this impatience with mental health, just, just, just get better. Just, just mm. get over it. You know, just get over it. Why can't you be okay? Um, so we're saying empathy and patience and sympathy. Mm. All of those things will really help mm -hmm. you and and the relationship. Okay, I know, Alison. There's, there's more we could go on. Um, as we say every time we're here, but we're going to kind of call it to a close today, and we'll be back here. I'm back here tomorrow, and for the rest of the week. Join me on my YouTube channel, Joanna Daniel. The link is going to be in the comments on Facebook. And um, just, yeah, be here with us every day at 1 p.m. where I'm giving you strategies to cope. We're going to talk about um, this week, perhaps into next week, how we manage our children, because I'm getting those kind of calls when we have children and we're locked down again. How are we managing? Um, and there's a big clue that we miss with managing children and stressful times and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be here again. Thank you so much for joining. Please like and share this video. And we're trying to get our YouTube channel up to 300 by the end of this week. 
We did it last week. You did it last week by sharing. And we're asking you to do that again. So we'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Mm-hmm.